Hello and welcome to another DGCAD uh, Revit building 8.1 A to Z in our lengthy series of Revit training here. Um, we're into part 5 and we're talking about families and we'll probably have uh, three or four at least uh, videos uh, on family. So we're going to start by just talking about an overview of how the whole thing kind of works and some of the the ins and outs of um, Revit families and then we'll uh, go in and start creating and editing and applying some different uh, types of families uh, in the the lessons to come. So first of all Revit families have an RFA extension so that's a Revit family file and you create Revit families in the family editor um, starting with a Revit RFT template file so that's the main thing we have some notes down here just a bit further on the exact steps you should take when you're creating uh, a family so um, families generally created in the family editor uh, within Revit so you can go in and say file new family just like down in here file new family and then you would pick a template file from there which is if we go down to our next screen it bumps you into this and it says okay you're about to make a family you know browse to the template folder um, that you might go to and it defaults to this folder and that's put in within Revit in your options where to go for template files and then you scroll through here and you pick the appropriate one and we'll talk a little bit more about those RFT template files so imperial or metric and then you select your template file after going file new family a um, couple more notes here. Note that all the loaded families are listed and categorized in the project browser. So once we go over to our Revit here, we can actually go down in our Revit and we can go down to our Families section over here under Sheets. Okay. And inside of here we see Families. And then we can see the different types of families. A big one is annotation symbols, all kinds of goodies inside of there. Okay, so whenever you load a family by going either and picking component and load and loading an existing family, or you can cut and paste a family. Okay, that it will populate itself in here. All families have a have a category. Okay, a family has to be one of the following. It has to be either an annotation or a ceiling or a column or a door or a, par a planting whatever so you'll see inside of here there there's subfolders and different types there's a family and there's different types within that family file okay when you load a family you'll notice quite often that it'll come with several different types you might load the single flush door and it's going to come with these different types inside of here so we'll add these parameters and basically you go in in the family editor and you duplicate it and you say a new type and you give it a different size and a different name just because it says it's a 30 by 80 doesn't mean it is really a 30 by 80 okay when we go in to draw that and you pick the properties you really need to go down and check and see if it actually is a 30 by 80 in here okay and we'll get further into that a little bit later okay so all your families are listed in here and you can also go in here anytime open up another project right click copy to clipboard go over to another project and then just inside of families right click or maybe into doors right click no edit paste from clipboard and then it will go into the right category so right click copy to clipboard and then there's no right click paste is there doesn't seem to be we have to go edit paste from clipboard and you'll bring that family so very nice back I don't think I think it was version 7 Revit 7 brought that in 6.1 would not let you uh, copy and paste families back and forth so that totally lets you transport families um, from project to project okay so that's just a note on that We'll go back to our notes here so there's all our project browser information if all else fails the family will be in that project browsers family are either families are either hosted or standalone depends on the family template it was created with so when you create a family you say whether it's hosted by a wall or hosted by a floor or hosted by a ceiling and when you start that template file right inside of here you'll see one that says you know casework wall based casework alone so this if you start your family from this it will have it will magnetize to a wall it will always attach itself to the wall so that's a good thing or a bad thing okay column curtain wall panel and would see more inside of here we'll have wind um, profile and profile wall based and 
um, profile ceiling based and lighting ceiling based lighting wall based if you make a wall light you might want it to be a sconce lighting where it's wall um, based or you want to have a ceiling light where it is ceiling based so we have to start with the right template okay we haven't even gotten near actually drawing any objects yet so um, start with the right template in place families are created within the project itself and rely on a lo on local geometry so if we go down into here and we we go to the modeling um, tab and on the design bar and we hit create we can actually go in and create in place uh, families right that depend on local geometry as opposed to going into the family editor okay this is in place creation of families that depend on local geometry or you can go and say you know new family and then you go into the actual family editor okay which is a little kind of a sub window a, a little mini Revit running within the Revit and you ha you'll notice that your design bar changes and everything is a little bit different um, in the family editor okay so in place families you can do local right there by going modify and create and it's at the very very bottom here by the way too this shows up at the bottom so when you're down in Revit if you can't see that create okay it's because we need to maybe close off another one of these and it'll start to show up in this case because my screen is so small I can't see it so I'm gonna go back in here and I'm gonna turn my basics back on but under here below this um, um, decal is our create button okay which looks just like this under modeling so then we have that then we have standard components so we have system families okay system families are like walls and roofs and floors and text and dimensions they're Revit's main the main things that make up the model and there's a little less flexibility as in creating them from scratch so system families have predetermined parameters we'll talk about that that you can modify but you cannot add new parameters to these special system families so you'll notice that you when you might go in and create a new family like a door or window or an appliance or a ceiling fixture you'll start from right from scratch whereas these ones you're gonna basically um, create a new type instead and modify the parameter so in here you'll basically clone what's there and then build on that so system families you need to basically build on what's already there and then standard component families are defined by creating geometry in the family editor and there are things like annotations like we're going to do a slope angle showing the you know the 6 and 12 or 8 and 12 slope um, we've got a door and window families we've got we can create furniture families appliances which would probably go under furniture or it might go under electrical or it might go under mechanical uh, we have a profile family which is important profiles get used for all different things it could be um, a wall sweep or a wall reveal it could be uh, a, a rain gutter around a fascia of a roof a profile could be a, a railing in a stair or it could be the profile of a vertical um, spindle of a stair um, so any sort of sweep or or um, reveal or extrusion you can use a profile a Revit profile family okay and we can have profiles that are wall based so very quickly maybe draw a counter and countertop and uh, cupboards just by drawing the outer profile and sweeping it along the wall and that's it and you can stretch it if you don't need any detail then we have wall battens where we do uh, wood battens around the uh, windows on the exterior that could also be a family and that would be a wall based family and then when it would stick to a wall and then you could change the size of it depending on the window we have ceiling fixtures also families lighting fixtures we have electrical fixtures we have wall fixtures and it and the family can have different views you can have the family so that when you look in the top plan view it shows just up like a, a circle uh, with two lines for instance electrical outlet uh, but yet when you look at it in elevation or in 3d view it'll show you an actual box that's at the wall so the family depending on which way you're viewing it will appear differently which is very nice okay so depending on how you appear or look at the family it can view as a symbol or it can view as for instance 
um, another family in fact you can have it view as an another family in plan and yet in 3d it shows up on the wall and then we have that so system family stand alone component families and we can go and load a family by just going into our uh, basic and then hitting the component button on our design bar okay so that gets us started with a bit of overview on that there's our browsing window this is an example uh, of a family inside of here and we would be in the family editor and this is just a small corner coffee table and we'll talk about what's going on in here and um, what we do is we we create the geometry and we lock it but we have uh, um, some specific things that uh, we can do here. I have some rules which are right down in the next screen here on how to do this. This is the kind of the end product of the family but you actually I suggest starting your family by sketching stuff on paper which we'll see. But we can see inside of here we do have some solid geometry and we have some constraining uh, dimensions and labels inside of here which end up being parameters. This length when we click on the, this table once it goes into our project we'll see the field length show up and we'll be able to change the number and it will update okay and when you change it the fact that this says equal based on the center here means it will grow in both directions so length and width you can change those numbers inside of there and we have some reference planes which are the green lines you can see you label your reference planes as well right and left and center and maybe top and base reference level this means that this is basically if you're on level one and you place this coffee table that the bottom of this will be at that actual reference level Okay, so we lock the geometry to the labeled reference planes, and we'll see that in a little bit. Okay, families can be cut and pasted from other projects. We saw families can be dragged in from Windows Explorer. So you can go into Windows Explorer and grab an RFA file and drag it right into your drawing and drop it in. And if it doesn't come in on your crosshairs right away, you can go to your family um, folder on the project browser and drag it in from there. The other way you can learn a lot about families is to investigate other families and learn from them. So go and open up other families like this is a really nice one that comes with Revit and it's very basic and you can go inside of here and after these lessons and click on this and start to investigate um, and see how creative other people get. Um, the thing is to create a family you have to there's a little bit more or a fair bit more work involved in the beginning and planning it out and laying it out uh, and it gets fairly busy fairly quickly um, so uh, but the, the key is once you get used to it you get over the intimidation of the really the busyness and then uh, you get in and use it and your work gets up front and then after you have that family forever and ever and all you, and it, it becomes parametric okay the whole thing here is driven by parameters which is parametric meaning you change the numbers in the dialog box and the objects update okay we have instance types where you would update just the one or if if you want to have it as a type it will update all of the different ones more or less like as if you were to update a bunch of blocks so you can make it so the parameters are changeable within each instance of it so you in you bring in four or five you might be able to change this number and it only affects that one that's an instance parameter as opposed to a type parameter where if you change it you're changing all of them okay in which case what you do is you duplicate that type give it a new name and change the number and that way you won't change all the other ones we'll see more about that so here we have some rules on creating um, families and this is um, just some rules to live by and uh, at least when you're getting started so the first thing you have to do when you create a family is plan it out on paper sketch it out get a big piece of white paper give yourself lots of room because you're going to be scribbling all over it and on the paper sketch out what you want in the family make it large with lots of white space for notes and dimensions and arrows and stuff it's kind of fun once you get doing it seems like a lot of work up front but you'll get used to it so in the sketch sketch out the plan view and the elevation view so do exactly like this if this is the family I want to build I would sketch this out exactly like this and say okay top plane uh, reference level length width, you know distance from 
corner distance from edge and label it all up okay so sketch this out on a piece of paper first don't dive right in and start doing it in the beginning because you'll find you'll get yourself lost very quickly however if you plan it out first then it will work out much better sketch in the controlling reference planes name the reference planes just like I said put in reference planes that you know will be the control points think later that when you change the numbers the last thing you're going to do is actually draw the objects. You have to set up all your your um, reference planes and dimensions and everything. Then you attach the objects to the reference planes, and that's when all the magic starts to happen. Okay, so label the reference planes logical um, dimensions. Uh, label the reference planes logical names. Dimension the reference planes relationships and any other sort of formula that you need to be applied as in height equals so label the reference planes and then dim and then um, you dimension them okay and um, label the actual dimensions ie height with height to base half width height to projection you'll start to figure this stuff out where basically what I'm talking about is um, is labeling your all of the parent like what you think inside of here, what the names and what the numbers should be and what the, the constraining information is. And you can use formulas as well because you can go in here for instance, if you always want this width to be half of this height, then while you're sketching this type in width and then put an equals um, length um, times 0.5. Okay, just sketch that in here because that formula can be put in later. That way you don't change this number, you change this and this is always half of that. Okay, some very powerful stuff we can do inside of there. So label the actual dimensions. Okay, then after that's all been sketched out and labeled, okay, then what you want to do is go in and now we're actually going to Revit. Okay, and once we go into Revit we start a new family and select the correct template file which we've already talked about. Okay. Then we um, create parameters based on the label dimensions from the sketch. So we'll see that we'll go in. We'll say new parameter height, new parameter length, new parameter you know uh, distance from floor, new parameter um, you know uh, thickness, um, leg diameter. All of the th the information we put up above, we start creating those parameters. Okay, we haven't drawn anything yet. Now we've just created parameters. We'll show you how to do that. Is it an instance parameter or a type parameter? Okay, this means that is it going to be the type of parameter you can change on each individual um, instance or is it going to be one that is going to change all of them? A type parameter will change all of them. Okay, then draw in the actual control reference reference plane. So you're in Revit, you go grab your reference plane tool and you start to draw reference planes in. You don't really care where they are and then you start to dimension them. And then after you dimension them, you can change it to the number that you suspect it will be or the most uh, common number. But the dimension itself isn't necessarily uh, important because you're going to be able to change that anyway or you will change it. So dimension, then you actually draw the reference planes, dimension the reference planes, okay? Then turn the dimensions into labels, parameters already created. So what you can do is once, you, once a dimension is created and then it's tied to the reference plane, you click on the dimension and you say you are a label and then you go back and grab one of these parameters and say this dimension is height, this dimension is tabletop thickness starting to see where it's going so you turn your dimensions into labels then finally okay way down here we draw the geometry in 2d or 3d so now we actually start to draw you know the solids and we have to know a little bit about massing in this case but we would draw the four legs as one mass and maybe the tabletop as another mass and then what you do is you lock that geometry to the reference planes Okay, lock the physical geometry to the reference planes. The reference planes are dimensioned with labels, and we've the labels are parameters, and we can then change it. Okay, then you flex the model by changing the parameters. I know some people say to recommend that you flex the model before you actually draw your geometry. You can go in right in this. You could take that flex uh, the model right inside of here, and we could we could even add that right inside of here because it's probably recommended you flex it even with just the reference planes okay oops I put that in the wrong place that needs to be up there so you can you can do that as well 
and then you'll see all the reference planes move around and the dimensions move around before you even draw anything. Then you go in and draw it, lock all the geometry, that's the key right here, lock it to the reference planes, then flex it again, watch it move, see if your numbers are, what's, if anything's going wrong, okay? Then you can continue, add geometry and flex the model, okay? As you go and then work it through and then you load the family into the project and further flex for use in the project and then after that it's back and forth between maybe the editor and, and the project file or not. But then the, that's really the, the rules, my personal rules of your training wheels on getting started and successfully going in and, uh, and drawing your families. And you can also go and you can say, um, uh, you can load the family right into the projects that happen to be open by load to project. So while you're in the family editor, there's a button over on the left and you can say load to project and it'll show you all the open projects and you can check off the one you want and then it will go into that um, particular project and uh, and then uh, or you can just uh, save the file you can do a save as okay if you have a family that looks good and you want to make changes open it and you can go open an RFA file you don't have to go new family you can go into Revit here and you can just say open and you can go open a family file because it'll open an RVT an RFA or an RTE so I can go actually open up for instance that one of that that table right inside of here and I can open it and so I don't you know botch it up or anything I can go into here and I can have a look at that from the top view Okay, and I can at any point I can just go file save as and I can call this, you know, table end table. I'll put a DG in front of that, save it. Now it's mine, I can't mess up the original, and then I can go in and start to see how this thing works. Okay. We'll come back to that later. We can go into family types over here. And then I can go in and for instance say, okay, well show me the third twenty four by thirty six version of that and it'll it'll show me that. Okay, and then I can say, okay, well, no, show me the 30 by 30 version of that. And these are different types of that same family. Okay, we'll try that a little bit later. So you can open up a family, do a file, save as, give it a new name. It's an RFA file, and then you can't do any harm to the existing ones. So we'll come back in our next few lessons and get in a little deeper and uh, make some families.